Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, October 20, 2022. Jamaica's export revenues increased by 2.3% for the first half of this calendar year when compared to the same period in 2021. Director General of the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, Carol Coy, gave the update during Statin's quarterly media briefing on Tuesday. She revealed that total export revenues amounted to 801 million US dollars between January and June. 659.6 million US dollars of that amount was for domestic exports, a decline of 3.3%. The decline in domestic exports was due to a 65.5% decline in the value of alumina exports. This was buffered by a 32.2% increase in exports from the manufacturing industry due largely to the performance of refined petroleum products. Conversely, total spending on imports for the first half of the year amounted to approximately 3.8 billion US dollars, 37.4% more than in the corresponding period of 2021. This increase was largely attributable to higher imports of fuels and lubricants, raw materials, intermediate goods, and consumer goods, which went up by 70.7%, 28.5%, and 33.8% respectively. Statin is also reporting positive news for Jamaica's employment performance so far this year. According to Statin's latest labor force survey, the country's unemployment rate for the quarter ending July declined by 1.9% over the same period in 2021. The data showed that in July 2022, there were 89,700 unemployed persons, and this is 22,800 fewer compared to July 2021. The number of unemployed males decreased by 8,100. There was, however, a larger decline in the number of unemployed females of 14,700. At the same time, the employed labor force increased by 4.4%, with the leading industry being real estate. Employment in the real estate and renting business activities, which includes administrative and support service activities, such as call centers, packaging and general cleaning of building activities, increased by 21,700. Of this increase, females accounted for more than three quarters, 16,800. The Mona Reservoir floating solar project in St. Andrew is expected to generate approximately $1 billion in annual savings for the National Water Commission, NWC. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Matthew Samuda, says the savings should be realized from the pending finalization of wheeling rates. Wheeling is the transmission of electric energy from within an electrical grid to an electrical load outside the grid boundaries. Senator Samuda says the commission will be wheeling 5 megawatts of solar-generated power to other NWC-qualified facilities between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. He reveals that during the pilot phase, approximately 50 kilowatt hours of power was generated, resulting in a 31% reduction in energy consumption at the Mona treatment plant for July 2022 compared to May's outturn. The NWC will utilize 100% of its energy needs at the Mona treatment plant complex. This res will result in savings at today's energy cost of approximately $35 million at that facility annually. During a recent sitting of the Senate, the minister advised that these and other savings would be used to improve critical infrastructure and address supply issues. The Mona Reservoir floating solar project pilot was officially launched by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in September, with total investment budgeted at 62.3 million U.S. dollars. The House of Representatives has approved a further 60-day extension for the zones of special operations, ZOSOs, in seven areas across Jamaica. They are Denham Town in West Kingston, Norwood and Mount Salem in St. James, Greenwich Town, Parade Gardens and August Town in St. Andrew, and Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland. The resolutions for the extensions were moved by Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang during yesterday's sitting of the lower house. As at October 13, 2022, he says the seven communities recorded reductions in all major crimes, including murder, for the period prior to and during the declaration of the respective Zosos. But the security minister argues that notwithstanding the progress made so far, the efforts must be continued for the desired outcomes to be fully realized. These continuous improvement activities require further focus, commitment and resources for immediate and long-term gains in order to ensure impact and sustainability. He gave a breakdown of the expenditure associated with the zones. 
So far, 300 million has been spent in Mount Salem and 400 million in Denham Town, while the Greenwich Town and August Town zones have collectively received more than $350 million in capital expenditure. Over the next 60 days, the respective social intervention committees will continue to drive the process on the ground to ensure irreversible transformation in these communities. Dr. Chang adds that a development plan has been created for the Savannah Lamar Zone, while the Social Intervention Committee is to finalize the work plan and confirm the required funding for parade gardens in the coming months. And as part of the interventions planned for Norwood, 20 micro-enterprises should receive grant assistance by December 31, adding to 30 that already benefited from a total $5.8 million in March. And finally, 23 more post offices are to be designated National Identification System NIDS Enrollment Centers alongside the Central Sorting Office, CSO. Chairman of the Postal Corporation of Jamaica, Professor Felix Akin Ladejo, gave the update during the recent reopening of the renovated CSO on South Camp Road. National Identification System NIDS have forged a mutually beneficial partners, partnership which will ensure to the benefit of our stakeholders. A number of strategically located post offices across the island will be designated as needs enrollment sites, and the renovated CSO is the first to be operationalized. As part of this, he says, NIDS has been making significant financial contribution to the remodeling of post offices across the island. The pilot of the NIDS project is set to start later this year, and the CSO will serve as the model for other enrollment centers. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.